Hi everyone, it's Chris at Court and Crown uh, with a slightly unusual video because I'm not going to taste any cider, I'm not going to taste any perry, uh, and I'm not going to try any cheese, which is kind of unusual for these videos these days as well. So I got given a gift, uh, a bottle of mead from somebody I work with. They came about it through some other work they were doing. And then three bottles of it that said, do you want to try one? I was like, yeah, all right, I'll try it. I didn't know what to expect. So I thought I'd do a film about it. So it's called, it's open already, but it's called Loxwood Mead Works are the producers. So mead, for those who don't know, is basically fermented honey. So you'll dilute honey with water, let yeast ferment it, and then you have an alcoholic beverage. That's what this is, 100% uh, honey. And then they're backswinging with honey as well with this guy. Uh, it's 12 point, what is it? 12 point, no, 12 point zero percent, 12 percent. Um, so wine strength, basically. So effectively, this is a substitute for wine, if you like. A um, couple of things I want to say to start with. I don't like the package. I know I say about you don't drink the packaging. It doesn't matter that much. But to be honest with you, sometimes packaging does bother me a little bit, um, especially when I think it looks like they spent a lot of money on it but somehow managed to make it look cheaper, which I feel they've done with this. I'm not a big fan of these gold and yellow thing across here. I think the font's quite quite nice, actually. I kind of like that. But I feel like this frosted bottle, this, it looks like something from the cheap shelf of an offie. And like, you know, it looks like a cheap, cheap bottle of wine from the bottom shelf is what it looks like. And it's probably cost them a lot of money to make it look like this. Yeah, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um... So why is mead going out of fashion as well, I guess? Well, who knows why mead's going out of fashion? Not sure. Basically, I, I associate it with medieval um, festivities. Um, in fact, I think in the, on the website, the person who set this up said they were, they were, they'd made it and they were handing out mead at a medieval jousting recreation or whatever, which just about sounded about right. That's where you'd expect to see it, to see it or purchase it or t t try it. Not, never anywhere else, but they felt that there was a market for it and lots of people liked it and therefore they should maybe, you know, produce it and sell it to a wider audience. So that's what they did. So let's have a taste. So, I uncorked it already. I couldn't wait to try it. I actually tried it a bit last night. But, um, I was knackered last night. I couldn't be asked to film anything. So, I didn't. I just drank some mead instead. So, looking at this, I mean, it looks like a white wine. It's a nice colour, it's golden. I mean, it's not as dark as honey, but yeah, it's slight honeyed characteristics in there, you know, I would say. Uh, swirling it around, let's have a look. What's it look like? Um, yeah, it's got legs, therefore you expect a little bit of viscosity to it as well. Uh, but it looks like quite a, you know, quite a reasonably well-coloured white wine. I can smell it already, actually. Though. So what does it smell like? It smells of honey is what it smells like, and, and, and beeswax as well to some degree is what it smells like. Definite honey, definite beeswax, but also, if you go into a test, like a supermarket, Tesco, Sainsbury's, which was any supermarket, you know, many are available, um, and you go to the milk section, often you'll see above cans of like coffee, co cold coffee, like cold latte, cold mochas, whatever. And if you try one of these, they're usually really, really sweet. They're really heavily sweetened. Suits me down the ground, actually. Um, and this tastes like one of those artificially sweetened, milky coffee drinks. That's what it smells like to me. There's, there's honey on the top, but beneath that, if you, if you ask me to smell this blind, I think I tell you I'm smelling like an artificially sweetened, you know, tin of latte, you know, like Starbucks latte or whatever latte, you know. That's actually what, it's, what, it, what it smells like. Shall we test it? So it's a fermented dry, then back sweetened with honey. And they're using 100% honey, is what it says. But I have to say, um, it is pretty sweet. They've gone heavy on the back sweetening. Um, once that honey kind of diminishes, what I'm left with is kind of like a, is what feels like a reasonably 
an okay dry white wine on the palate. The alcohol feels a bit hot. I'm feeling the burn a bit here. It's quite warm, um, which I don't love. Um, and it has got acidity, but... I think perceived sweetness is greater because of that slightly fake, you know, heavily sweetened, cold tin of mocha or latte, whatever. And I'm getting at my nose. Really strange. Yeah, really strange. If I just got the honey, I would like it, but that a super sweet coffee thing. That's really off-putting. And every time you put your nose in the glass to, to taste it, you get it. You can't get around it. There's acidity in this, but it feels out of whack. It doesn't feel like the acidity is balancing that sugar. So some of you may be getting the impression that I don't like this very much. And unfortunately, you'd be right. I'm not a big fan of this. And the other thing to notice is this. It's 15 quid a bottle. 15 quid a bottle. If I had 15 quid and I went somewhere like this, I'd probably go and buy a bottle of Thunderbird, blue or red label, whichever you prefer, and keep the extra tenner. <laughs> well, more than a tenner, I think, whatever it is. You know, um, because I feel like I'd get I'd get more booze out of it and um, probably about an equivalent flavour. You know, sweet, cheap, sweet wine. It's going to taste like. Sorry, Lux, uh, Luxwood Mead Works. I don't like slagging people off. I don't like criticising, but I've got to be honest. Got to be honest. You know, I'm actually sitting here in a shed all by myself. So if I'm not telling the truth, if I'm lying, who am I lying to? You know, don't make any sense. So yeah, I'm not sure this is necessarily representative of what mead can be though. I think if this was dry or only fractionally back sweetened, it would be a lot better drink, a lot better drink. So, on that note, hold on a sec. I have something else in the shed that cost about five, five, six quid. It's not Thunderbird. It's a cheap bottle of medium dry sherry, a Montiado blended sherry. So I've talked about sherry a bit lately, particularly when I was trying, I think, the Manchego, because Manchego, sherry, Spanish, kind of go well together. Um, and actually I think that sort of a Montiado is a lot of sherries, like the nutty kind of like middle of the range ones that are slightly oxidised. Uh, not necessarily the Finos and Manzanias, which are really dry and was briny, or the PXs, the Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez, it's great to say. Which is super sweet, it's like drinking Christmas cake, which I also love. But you know, it's like a dessert in itself. You don't really need a lot of other things with it. And if you did have something, you'd have blue cheese or something, something with salt. I find these guys in the mid range really good. I think the Manchego also things like Parmigiano Reggiano and stuff as well. So this is cheap, so it's probably a third of the price of the mead. Let's try it. Look at that, screw cap. Didn't even need a corkscrew. Effortless. So what's this? This is 17.5%. It's much bigger than, well, most wines that you can get. Certainly bigger than that. Sh uh, sh um, mead and a lot stronger than the, any of the ciders and stuff that we would ever try. Unless it's possibly an ice cider where it's really concentrated. But even then I'm not sure it gets into that sort of levels of alcohol. So, this is Amontillado. So a quick breakdown of sherry. So you get like Finos, Manzanias, then you get Olorosos, Amontillados, and then you get the PXs, Pedro Jimenez. So from bone dry to really sweet. And the ones in the middle are Olorosos and Amontillados. They're basically, uh, they're, they're, they're stored in barrels which aren't fully filled to the top. I think they're about two thirds full. So oxygen comes in and it basically oxidizes it. Gives it color, gives it um, um, certain flavours, nuttiness to it, uh, which is fantastic. Um, because they're forti these are the, they're stronger, they're fortified to a higher alcohol level. So that means that bacterial mould pellicles won't grow on the top. That's how you get the, 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 the brighter, younger, fresher ones. Without the oxidisation, they have a f floor, like 
pellicles, moulds that grow across the top, sealing them from, from, from the oxygen, so they don't react with oxygen. However, these guys, they're stronger in alcohol, they're fortified, which means those, those pellicles, those skins on the top can't grow, so the oxygen gets in and gives them more character. Other interesting thing about cider, it's made in something called the cider sherry, sherry, Chris, sherry, sherry, sherry. It's made using something called the Solara system. So the Solara system is a really interesting system. Imagine it as like a, 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 a tower of barrels, okay? And when you've pressed your grapes, okay, and fermented your grapes, you put the juice in the top to age. So that's your youngest, um, your youngest sherry, youthful sherry, if you like. Right. And next year, you say half of that down the next layer of barrels. And the year after that, and you put the new juice in the top, the new sherry, young sherry in the top. And then the year after that, you move them all down again, all down again, all down again. And what you do is you have several sort of like layers of barrels, if you like, and you fill your bottles from the barrels on the bottom. But you don't fully empty the ones at the bottom. You say half empty them. And then you, 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 you stock them up from the barrels above, and those get stuck from the barrels above, and those get stuck from the barrels above. So have these layers of age blending through the Solaris system. Best way it was ever described to me was if you bought a car, brand new, filled it to the top with petrol, drove it for thousands and thousands of miles for years and years and years, but you never ran out of petrol. You'd always have some of the original petrol in the tank. And that's kind of the Solaris system. So you can spend five quid on a bottle of sherry. Some of the sherry in this will be decades old. Will have been aged for decades in that barrels evolving, getting more complexity, and that'll be blended with slightly younger, slightly younger, slightly younger, etc. So what you're paying for what you get, it's not like a sherry, is actually something which is intriguing and actually very complex in terms of the way it's made and also the, the flavours you can get. Okay, having said all that, shall we try it? Let's try it. All right. There's a little bit of that mead left in here. Anyway. So. so there's a the colour I was talking about, okay? So oxidization brings colour, probably sitting in a barrel probably a bit of colour. They're, they're very old barrels, so you're not going to get a lot of colour from them. But there you go, look at that. That's the colour. I mean, if that was a side, I'd say that was deep amber. You know, that's like a guacin sort of amber, that, isn't it? Really cool. 70.5%, so we expect it to be more viscous. So I'll look. So I'll look. Oh, yeah, some legs just appearing, just starting to run down. See, there's some viscosity in this. Alcohol is viscous. Ergo, you're going to have viscosity if you've got something higher in alcohol. It's probably a bit too warm, this. No, no matter, it is what it is. <laughs> no, on this. I mean, there is heat from the alcohol, no doubt about it. But, it smells so much more interesting than that mead. So much more interesting. It's like nutty, and there's like a burnt sugar aspect to it. There's all raisins. Raisins, absolutely. And there is a bit of a Christmas cakey element to it, you know. That's the, probably the bouginess that goes in the Christmas cake, but still, yeah. For what I paid for this, I kicked that other thing's ass, and that was 15 quid, and this was four, six, I think, something like that. And it's 750 mil, same size bottle. Cheers. Wowzers. Okay, so it's a medium dry, so there's sugar in this, and it's only 0.5%, so certainly warming, but there is that nutty, raisin-like quality to it, which I love. I mean, I really like it. I wish this was colder. I wish this was really cold. It'd be amazing. Amazing. Be really, even though it's rich, it'd be actually really refreshing as well, I think. I want to have it with cheese. I want to have it with, like, uh, almonds and stuff, you know, the sort of things you would eat in Spain if you were having sherry, typically, you know, tapas, basically. Man, kicks its ass. Kicks its ass. Okay. I was going to, that was meant to be a quick one. It's actually been 15 minutes, so I do apologise for that, but I thought it'd be interesting to do something other than cider for once, because there's lots of other interesting things in the world, and, you know, sometimes it's worth exploring. I was gifted the meat, so I thought, why not try it? Why not try it? And then I had the idea of this, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm going to keep this around to have some cheeses. When I get some more cheese in, because uh, I think it'd be really interesting to see how it works. And I might get some more manchego as well to try it with. Okay, guys, hope you thought that was interesting or relevant to your interests, if you like. But yeah, it's a big old world out there, and it's good to sort of try a bit of everything. Okay, cool. I'm going to continue drinking this. Not sure about the mead, but um, yeah, 
I hope to see you again. And until then, cheers.